I thought it was a fantastic evening and a great speaker. And it really was a very powerful overview of all the dynamics in China and Asia. So I learned a lot from it. My business has several offices in Asia. And any, any business that's orientated globally that just needs to understand it. So when you get someone of the quality of Gerard coming to Edinburgh, from my point of view, that's fantastic. China needs to buy foreign. The three words, in my view, that characterised the last decade were not war and terror, but were made in China. I think the three words that will characterise the next decade will be bought by China. They need to buy brands, they need to buy intellectual property, they need to buy high technology. The big debate down in Westminster is whether Britain should or shouldn't leave the European Union. The big debate, in my view, should be about how Britain positions itself in a changing global economy, and in particular how we continue to export more to Asia, compete more with Asia, and attract more investment from Asia. Our mission is to help Scottish companies and educational institutions engage with opportunities across Asia through providing access to innovative thinking and ideas. And additionally, we hope to be able to educate and inform the people of Scotland about Asia as a region extending from the Gulf in the West to Japan in the East and to foster and encourage business and cultural exchange. We want to produce and will produce programmes in the areas of education, arts and culture. Because those who watched what happened in Japan when there was the earthquake and the great tsunami and admired the extraordinary stoicism of the Japanese people could not really understand it unless they understood or understand Japanese culture. Secondly, we want to engage around areas of business and economics. So that's why we want to launch the Adam Smith series of global economic briefings. And Gerard very generously is kicking that off tonight. But just to let you know that uh, Professor Danny Kwa, uh, the Kuwait Professor of Economics at the London School of Economics, will be speaking in March. Stephen King, Global Chief Economist of HSBC, will come on the 16th of May. Jim O'Neill, Chairman of Goldman Sachs Asset Management, on the 17th of July. And that great iconoclast, Lord Desai, Emeritus Professor of Economics and School of Economics, uh, in September uh, later in the year. It looks like a lot of thought has gone into the program for next year, um, and I think it can only grow from here. So I think it's a first-class idea, probably long overdue and uh, very much hoping that it, it, um, uh, it prospers and thrives um, long into the future. The main focus for us in Scotland has to be about exports. That's where the growth is for us. So, uh, you know, I think this is, um, as was said, I think Roddy said, it's, it's probably quite a timely thing to, to have this uh, HS Scotland Institute to, to help facilitate that kind of uh, interaction between us and, and Asia. I think it's important for students as well as business people here in Edinburgh and Scotland to have greater level of awareness, greater ability to talk and debate and maybe hopefully benefit from what's happening on the other side of the world. So I think there are some quick wins and it's interesting to hear the other speakers you have planned. The longer term potential is huge. Actually I really hope to um, see more of such events and to be able to talk to um, Scottish businesses who are thinking of venturing in Asia. Like, um, I'm Asian myself and I want to see, I'm interested in Asia, but I'm interested in being st studying in Scotland. I'm interested in how there is going to be a connection with business in Scotland and Asian businesses. Uh, Adam Smith, of course, uh, famously wrote that China has been one of the richest, that is, one of the most fertile, best cultivated, most industrious and most populous countries in the world. It seems, however, he said, to have been long stationary. Well, that, I think, we'll learn uh, has uh, changed in the last uh, few years. I believe the world economy is in a super cycle of economic growth. If I say that in the West, people tend to think I've been smoking something. If I say it in Asia, people nod and think, yeah. Well, what's, what's the big fuss about that? The statistics I will use are 32, 62, 72. At the beginning of this century, the world economy was $32 trillion in size. Hard to picture it, but pretty big amount. At the beginning of the financial crisis, or indeed the evening before Lehman Brothers went belly up, uh, the world economy was just under $62 trillion in size. At the end of this calendar year, despite what's happened in the West, Despite the financial crisis, the world economy will reach $72 trillion in size. 
So the world economy is growing. Those are nominal figures. Some of that growth is inflation. But the vast, vast, vast bulk of it is real economic activity led primarily by the emerging economies and in particular by China and Asia. In this shift in the balance of power, I would argue that the winners around the world will be those countries that have at least one of the three C's, the cash, the commodities, or the creativity. In my view, people in the West don't get it about China and indeed about other countries. The pace and scale of change is dramatic. So what are particularly opportunities you can see for British business in China? Do you think that our engagement with China is aided or impeded by our ties with Europe? What sort of things do you think the West can do or the outside of the world can do to help China to build the in soft in infrastructure? What's your advice to the skill sets that young people, younger people should acquire and the focus that they should be adopting? In a nutshell, I think people here should, whatever they learn, and I don't think they have to learn an academic subject, whatever they learn, I think, as Adam Smith would say, play to your strengths by the invisible hand, and also think globally and think internationally. He's right. Uh, I don't think many in the West really understand the scale of the Asian opportunity and the pace of change. And uh, for our society, for our economy to prosper, we're going to have to uh, learn to understand pretty quickly. And one of the points that Gerald brought out, he talked about the three C's, and one of them was creativity. And that's a very important dynamic, I think, for everybody in the economy in Scotland to be much more creative in their products or their services. I'll be back. And um, uh, I thought the it was a very good starter lecture because it set actually quite a high level of debate. So I have no doubt that other events will attract a very good audience.